Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Uh, it's the start of October. Um, I'm at Bill's Lake number two. Uh, I've got a week booked on here. Just got here, got the bivvy up, day shelter. Got to get the rest of the van unpacked. Here's a quick look at lake number two. Nice big open area. Let's just pan round so you can see the lake. This is the middle swim. Conditions look great. Perfectly still at the minute. That's the right hand margin. That's the far bank, or the high bank as it's known. around to the left hand side. Well, I'm going to get uh, set up, get everything ready, get everything in place for the week. Um, I'll come back to you with um, some information on uh, what tactics I'm going to take for the week, uh, where I'm going to target. Um, I need to work some spots out have a good plumb around, just get all the depths sorted out, try and find some spots for uh, tonight. But over the course of the week, um, I'll show you what my approach is, um, what kit I'm using, uh, and hopefully we can get a few fish on the bank to show you as well. So for the first night, I found some spots on the uh, far margin. Got uh, the right hand rod, the middle rod, both on the far bank. Got the left hand rod in the top left hand corner, all gone down with a nice solid donk. I don't think there's much weed in this lake or, or sort of debris on the bottom. I don't think there's any silt. Uh, it's a pretty clean sort of gravel based bottom. I've seen one or two fish moving on the far bank, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with those spots. Not put a great deal of bait out, just gonna try and film my way in over the course of uh, sort of tonight and tomorrow morning just to uh, see how the fish react. These, these lakes stand the side of the Marne River in the Marne Valley were all flooded um, six to eight weeks ago and um, they've been fishing quite tough recently. Uh, the water temperature is quite low. Um, if you get your hand in the water it's, uh, it's definitely a lot cooler than what you would expect in uh, October and um, the lake's probably got a foot of extra water on it still so I'm um, just going to try and take a winter based approach, a small tight little patch of bait to start with, fish for a bite, if we can get a spot doing repeat bites then I'll start to introduce some more bait and just try and build the swim up from there. Let's see what the first night brings, just as we go along, but that's, uh, that's my strategy to start. Okay guys, first bite of the session. Uh, it's taken a couple of hours, so we're uh, quite chuffed that we've got a spot that's working already. It's probably not the uh, number one intended sort of target, but a bite to bite to get started with. So uh, here we go. Fourteen pound cat. So right hand rod, far margin, snowman presentation. Good to get off the mark. Well, that was a nice, pleasant surprise. 
wasn't expecting a bite that quickly even though it was a cat i'll uh, definitely take that so uh right hand rod did the uh, did the business there so um quite tight in on the margin on the far side just to give you a bit of guidance for where i'm at it's about the spot there just that gap there between the uh the tree line as it goes across i'm probably one to two foot off the uh, off the tree line in nice and tight it's about six foot of water over there rod's back out there now put a little bit more bait back on the spot only a couple of handfuls Encouraging start though. Hi guys, uh, just about to lose the light on the uh, first day. So um, yeah, um, been a long day. Uh, I was up early to uh, get on the uh, uh, Channel Tunnel this morning. Uh, three hours drive sort of down here to, uh, to Bill's Lake uh, during the early part of today. Um, got my camp set up, uh, happy with uh, everything and ready for the first night uh, got the rods out and uh, sort of the spots are all sort of primed and happy with the location of uh, where they're at for the first night so uh, fingers crossed we uh, we get some action uh, during the evening it'd be nice to get that first carp on the bank and uh, um, get the get the carp blank out of the way as such so uh, um, there's plenty of sort of species in uh, in Bill's Lake 2 here so we've got um, uh, we've got mirrors, commons, grassies, uh, sturgeon. Uh, we've seen the cat already. Um, there's there's a number of cats in here that go a lot bigger than the one that uh, was on the bank earlier this afternoon. Uh, there's tench, bream. So um, so yeah, plenty of chance of uh, uh, a bite from uh, any one of those. Hopefully. So um, yeah, we'll see what the first night brings. Uh, reassess again tomorrow and. Um, yeah, catch you uh, tomorrow morning if there's uh, no action in the night. Morning, so day two. No action in the night, unfortunately. Uh, all rods are still out there. I'm going to look to uh, refresh them early afternoon. Not seen many shows or activity out there so far so uh, no reason not to believe I'm in the wrong area a bit more wind about today probably about 14 15 degrees at the minute so uh, typical sort of autumnal conditions For those of you thinking of booking onto Bills Lake 2, uh, let's have a little look around. I'll show you each of the pegs, uh, the communal area, uh, just basically what you get if you're thinking of booking on. So this is the entrance to Bills Lake 2. You've got the toilet there on the left hand side. This is the driveway down into the uh, communal area. So you've got a nice big open grassy area. Lake on the right hand side. Angler's hut on the left there. Plenty of space here to work with. Got three pegs. This is peg number one middle peg and then as you can see I'm set up in the uh, far left hand peg so this is peg number one stony area here that you can uh, bivy up on if you wish this peg gives you the option to fish all the way down down the right hand margin some nice overhanging bushes and trees there. You've got a couple of corners that you can get to as well, which are nice features. Plenty of open water spots. And you could, if you wanted, 
just plonk one sort of down here to the left under this tree. There's quite a bit of gap between the pegs. So walking down to uh, the middle peg then. Loads of area around the pegs here if you want to park your vehicles, bring a motor home, big sort of tent, sort of marquee or whatever you wanted to bring in addition to your regular bivvy. This is the middle peg. Plenty of overhead space for, uh, for casting. So panning around from the right then. Far margin looks great. Loads of spots over there. You could easily put just three rods solely on the far margin if you wanted. Okay, so down to the last peg then. Get around the side of my van. So I've got a bivvy up and a, a day shelter. My rods are out. So there are some, some steps down here. As you can see, with the recent flood in, the bottom step is still underwater. The level's about a foot up on uh, where, where it would normally be, according to Bill. Wind's getting up a bit. So you've got the tree line margin down the left hand side of the lake here. Again, there's a few overhanging trees and bushes that you can, uh, you can send a boat sort of close to. Now the trees on the left hand side of this peg do overhang more than peg number one so it is a little bit more difficult to get tight in the corner on this peg uh, but you can do it with the boat. And then just sort of panning back around here to show you the rest of the area you know behind this peg here loads of sort of open grassy space. You could easily put four or five vehicles in here if you wanted to, not that you ever would, but it uh, just gives you an idea of the sort of space available. And then looking back up towards the middle peg and the first peg, you can see the size of the area that's available here, you know, loads of space. And there's the access track at the top. So this is the Angus Shelter got your rubbish bin down the side just moving in got a workspace here where you can do your cooking there's a gas powered fridge provided on this lake plenty of space in there to uh, keep all your food and a few drinks on the wall we've got the rules for the lake we've got details of where to find the, the nearest supermarket and tobacco there's the phone number there for the pizza and kebab house that will deliver uh, contact details for uh, Bill and Ruth and details for the uh, rubbish and recycling what goes into uh, the bin and the recycling box and plastic sack that's provided just put a panning round here you've got a, sh a shelf up in the top left hand corner there there would normally be a, uh, a power unit up there but Bill's got that away at the minute doing some work on it Got a nice sort of gravelly base. This is the view looking out towards the pegs. So peg one, middle peg, and then the uh, the far peg. Okay, guys, some uh, extra information for you if you're thinking of booking up to any of Bill's lakes. So in terms of the journey from Calais, it's probably as easy as it could ever be to any French lake. Um, it's about a 200 mile journey, so it's relatively long. Um, it's about three hours, um, but as far as the roads are concerned, if you come out of the Channel Tunnel terminal or if you get the ferry over to Calais, then you've got the A26 that you can join 
probably about you know a mile from each of the terminals that takes you from Calais and that road that auto route will literally be one straight road for you to follow all the way down to Reims you go round the side of the Reims bypass and out the other side it's about another I think about another 30 kilometers past Reims where you come off the uh, auto route and from there about another 10 minutes into Matug. I think I'm pronouncing that right that's the local village where the uh, the lakes are based so it's a it's a toll road journey from Calais you go through a couple of toll plazas in total it's 28 euros the roads in my experience you know at the times that I traveled them hardly any traffic no road works just a nice straight easy run when you get into the local area um, near the lake you've got the Leclerc supermarket it's about 10 minutes away you've got everything there that you'll, you'll probably ever need there is also a petrol station there so you can uh, get your tank filled back up ready for the uh, journey back to Calais and also in Matug as well I'll put a picture up but there's a really really nice bakery on the right hand side as you drive through the village that's the right hand side if you're coming from the auto route I'll put a picture up so you can uh, see what it looks like but make sure you get yourself in there there's some really nice bread pastries and all sorts of other stuff that you probably shouldn't be eating that uh, you definitely do need to eat so uh, get yourself in there but in terms of the overall journey to, to Bills if you are nervous about sort of driving or if it's your first trip to France and sort of you've not driven on the right and so the side of the road before this particular journey is literally you know as easy as easy as it could ever be so don't have any doubts I'd get yourself booked up this has got to be one of the easier lakes to access in France and you know nice easy journey there from Calais Hi guys, early morning, day three. Wow, what a night. Probably, yeah, hopefully sense the uh, the wind in the background, but it's been gusting sort of 40, 45 mile an hour all, all night. It literally started about 9 p.m. yesterday. And uh, yeah, I had to get up a couple of times in the night to uh, re-peg the uh, day shelter. It's been really, really gusty. Wind's kiting hard into this bottom left hand corner. Loads of rain to go with it as well. The good news is, just after six this morning, right hand rod on that same snowman presentation ripped off. 28 pound 12 sturgeon literally took me all over the place. Took both of the other lines out. Massive, great big. Sort of mess. All three lines had to be uh, brought in. He's absolutely chucking it down. I couldn't get the tripod to stand up for the camera, so uh, so no video for him. But I will put a, uh, a still photo that I managed to get in the video after this, so you can see the sturgeon. Lovely fish, proper fight. Just what you come out here for. Right, I've got two out of three rods back out again. Just need to uh, get the third re rigged and uh, ready to go. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what today brings. It's supposed to be a load of rain all day today again. So uh, good conditions really. Carp are playing very elusive at the minute. So uh, definitely want to try and get one of each. You know, common mirror and grassy on the bank before the end of the week if, if I can. So uh, so yeah, let's get them rods back out there and uh, see if we can get a carp in the net. Crazy weather continues. It's 
Sunday afternoon guys, still plenty of rain coming down. Let's take a look at the rig I'm using this week. So I've started off with the snowman presentation, just got it held up here against the side of the, uh, the shelter so it's nice and easy to see. So let's just zoom in there. So I've got PB products, 25 pound jelly wire in silt, stripped back down to a PB products curved KD size 4 hook. It's a really aggressive hook pattern. No need for a kicker with that, very sharp. Boyback style and I'm using a, a DNA S7 18mm bottom bait there topped off with a uh, PB 12mm pop-up. So that's uh, the presentation that's done both bites so far. It's about 7 or 8 inches in length anti-tangle sleeve so I've got a couple of rods on that presentation and the other one is out there same rig just with a white topper instead of the uh, the PB so let's see what the next 24 48 hours brings but loads of confidence with this rig and uh, um, I'm pretty sure it'll do the business so uh, fingers crossed we'll get ourselves a, uh, a carp on the bank next in the uh, not too distant future. Okay guys, third fish of the trip. Sunday afternoon, mid afternoon, left hand rod's gone. That snowman presentation again. Wash it down. Come on, turn over. Okay, here we go. Second sturgeon, 24-12. Tail walking across the surface, trying to shake the hook. Had a damn good go at taking out all the all three other rods but uh, thankfully uh, managed to save them this afternoon but uh, yeah made up with this such hard fighting fish these are absolutely great sport let's get it back Good day so far then, both of those sturgeon. They're both coming from uh, mid-water. Just where the dip is in the uh, in the trees on the far margin. Just worth noting with uh, any water that you go to that have got sturgeon in, but both of those two were hooked quite deeply. So set of these, you know, sort of pike forceps or any long nose forceps definitely make sure you've got them uh, with you because uh, if I hadn't got those unhooking both of those sturgeon from uh, today would have been quite a challenge to be honest so um, yeah that's an essential bit of kit for a, uh, a water that's got sturgeon in it so uh, hopefully that helps Okay, so uh, just before midnight guys, Sunday night. Just call me Mr. Sturgeon. Third one of the week. Now, I need to check the photos, but there's a chance this could be the same one as what I had this afternoon. It's still got plenty of energy. Another great fight. It's wiped out all my rods again, so I've got to try and work out what I'm going to do there. Try and get them back out again tonight, but let's uh, let's get it back for now. And I'll look at the photos in a bit to uh, work out if it's the same one or not.
back again tonight guys so uh, after that sturgeon earlier took out all three rods took me about an hour and a half to uh, get the mess untangled and to uh, get everything sort of reset up and uh, get the rods back out on the spot so it was probably about half past one by the time that was finished so uh, I'm glad I did because the reward for the efforts here so uh, let's just uh, give her a wash off okay all right here we go then nice and lively as you can see Thirty pounds, twelve ounces. Beautiful mirror, left-hand margin. Look at that. So that's the first carp of the trip. What a result! I'll show you the other side quickly. Let's flick around. those fins are all tucked in okay quick wash off oh, by the grass there let's get rid of that there you go there's the other side beauty Well, it's definitely a fair bit fresher this morning. I had to uh, dig around in the back of the van and get the old puffer jacket out. So, uh, yeah, temperature's dropping. Well, safe to say it was a bit of a crazy night. Um, sort of started around midnight. That first sturgeon bite literally wiped all the rods out again, which is a bit of a nightmare in the dark at the best of times. But um, I'm pretty sure that sturgeon was a repeat. Um, of one I'd had earlier in the day which is a bit bizarre as well but I've got them clearly on the feed right now I think so um, so yeah so really glad I made the effort to uh, sort the three rods out and get them back out sort of took about an hour hour and 15 minutes something like that to uh, I had to cut all the lines um, sort of set up fresh rigs um, yeah just a complete sort of you know tangled bird's nest so no way of unpicking that so uh, so yeah, so just, you know, I guess, um, you know, if you get that situation yourself, it's always worth putting the effort in, you know, because, um, you know, the, as the night sort of panned out from there, you know, if I just parked the three rods up for the night and got my head down and sort of said I'd sort it out in the morning, I, I would have missed a load of action. So um, um, I had a small cat, uh, just, a, I'd say about eight to 10 pound. Didn't film that because uh, it, it was raining at the time. Uh, then the uh, the mirror come along, so uh, great to get the first carp on the bank. So uh, that was in beautiful, beautiful condition. Not a blemish on it. Um, real sort of chunky, solid fish. Um, another sturgeon after that. Um, that wiped out two of my rods. Um, so um, thankfully not all three again. Um, but um, yeah. Um, barely convinced that was possibly a repeat as well and and then at first light this morning another sturgeon bite again um, so um, that one um, did the, the tail walk across the surface again and uh, actually sort of through the rig and uh, well, just to sh sort of try and describe the power of these fish to you you know the, the way it threw the rig I could see the lead you know it hadn't ejected the lead um, but the lead went easily 10 or 15 meters up in the air as it was shaking its head on the you know top of the water and it got rid of the rig so uh, yeah just 
seeing that in the daylight, you know, because most of the bikes do come in the night, so you, you don't get to see them uh, tail walking and um, see exactly what they're up to out there um, during the night. But um, yeah, just great night, and um, yeah, just need to work out now a way of trying to what like sturgeon are obviously heavily on the feed, so that's that's five sturgeon bites in the last 24 hours. So. I'm um, just going to have a think through today, you know, leave the rods alone until uh, early afternoon, but I'm just going to have to think what approach changes I'm going to make, just to try and see if I can pick up one or two more carp bites, because I think what's happening out there is that, you know, the sturgeon are sort of marauding around the lake and literally finding my spots and just clear, clearing them out before, you know, the carp are able to get, get on them, move in, and um, it's probably costing me maybe one or two carp bites, so... Um, so we'll tackle that and um, I'll let you know what changes I'm going to make but um, yeah, busy night. So let's have a look at the bait I pre-ordered off Bill before I got here. All these options are on Bill's website so you can pick from these and uh, get your order in before you get out to France. So this is Bill's Big Fish Mix, right good mix of all sorts of particle in there. Moving across, bucket of hemp. That's got a few tigers sort of mixed in. And then some pellet. I think it's about four mil, to be honest. Okay, so, um, so far, so what are we, uh, this is day four. So I'm on my second bucket of Bill's fi uh, big fish mix. Morning, everyone. Tuesday morning, just gone eight o'clock. Quiet night, no action. Uh, well, I had a sturgeon about half past nine, ten o'clock last night, but nothing else through the night. But uh, yeah, the right hand rod on the far margin has uh, trundled off. Not a particularly aggressive take, just nice and slow. Thought it might be a bream or a tench. Forgot the fact that. Uh, the old grassies save their action for when they're on the bank rather than the water normally. 31 pound on the nose. Beautiful. I'll show you the other side quickly. I'm not gonna try and turn this in the sling even though I've got a load of water in there because of the length of the fish. So let's just move the sling round, be ultra careful. Wash her off. Come on, I can feel it tensing up. There we go. A little bit of scale damage on this side, so uh, I'll treat that before she goes back. Beautiful fish though. she's ready to go hi guys quick video update so it's now thursday quite a couple of days to be honest unfortunately um, i have picked up uh, sturgeon and, and cats but nothing on the cart front since uh, tuesday now so uh, that grassy being the uh, the last one so um as you can see in the background today absolutely stunning day sun out beautiful conditions Not a ripple on the world on the water even though the sun's out it's not that warm though i've sent the right hand rod out with the zig just to try something different today 
it's got a black zig bug out there about three quarters of the way across over the course of the week i've seen one or two fish movements in the area where i put the zig Now on a total of seven sturgeon, three cats, a 30 pound mirror and the 31 pound grassy for the week. I've not blogged the uh, sturgeon and, and the cats as they've come in. I think I've caught the same sturgeon at least twice now. Not sure how many sturgeon are in, are, are in here, but uh, they're definitely quite active. Water temperature drop that happened over the latter part of the summer with the flood in is probably not helping the carp bites right now but as you can see it's a beautiful day it's great to be on the bank you know i've had a couple so far this week so i'm happy with how the week's gone so far one more night to go so hopefully one more carp to come It'd be nice to get a common so that give me a, a full set then sturgeon cat mirror grassy and common so uh, yeah still a chance fingers crossed so um, hopefully I can bring you a shot of another carp before the end of the session so one of the benefits of booking onto any of Bill's Lakes uh, guys is the proximity of the River Marne if you do fancy doing something different for one afternoon for two or three hours then the river's really accessible uh, by all accounts, it's uh, stuffed full of chub and barbel, so there's probably some really good coarse fishing to be to be had there if you fancy doing something different. Uh, let me show you sort of how close uh, the river is to Lake 2, what the bank looks like and uh, how accessible it is. So here's the view of the River Marne, downstream that way, that'll take you straight to Paris. And then upstream, which I believe the source for this river is uh, Lac du Dare. It's a really nice looking river. There aren't many places where you can fish it. You can probably see sort of around here, you know, really sort of steep banks on the side of the river. Um, where I'm stood now, you could fish here, but you'd need a probably a two and a half metre landing net pole. Does look real good though. Nice fast current on the outside of the uh, bend here. There's a nice slack in that uh, shadow on the inside there. So if you are interested in fishing the river, hopefully that gives you a good view. Just in terms of uh, where the rest of the lakes are, so over the back of the river over there, that's Lake 5. Then looking back behind me here, behind these trees here, that's Lake 4. You can see the surroundings that all of the lakes are in. Farmland, nobody about anywhere. Very peaceful surroundings. And then Lake 2 is behind these trees here. That's the main entrance to Lake 2 through that gap in the trees. And if you want to walk around the back of the far margin of Lake 2, then that gap through the trees over there is how you get to the far margin. So it's the last night now. Just putting the rods out for the last time. This is the last rod going now. Across to the far margin. Fingers crossed. About 12 hours left. Hopefully I can get that common. If you are going to fish a lake too uh, and look at fishing the far margin then the shelf on that uh, particular bank does slope off quite quickly and it is well worth getting in as tight as you can on that far marginal shelf it is well worth using a boat guys you can try and cast it 
but to get the accuracy i guess it's about 120 yards something like that i haven't wrapped it up to see exactly what the specific distance is but yeah my recommendation if you've got a boat use the boat get it in nice and tight get yourself right on that shelf just checking the uh, the depth now so the boats just coming into about seven foot of water now. Just gonna inch that forward a little bit. Okay, there we go, happy with that. So that's my rig down, both hoppers emptied. Let's get the boat turned round. So there's a little bit of a game of chance with your boat over there, so if you've got a boat that's not got a protruding aerial you can probably afford to go in a little bit tighter but my boat's got a probably a five to six inch aerial and uh, there is a chance that you could get it caught up in the uh, overhanging trees over there so uh, on some of the spots on the far margin the, the tree line is right down on water level so um, just need to be a little bit careful around that but i'm happy with where that's gone down fingers crossed now you know, last night, long ass carp would be brilliant before uh, I'm off at uh, half six in the morning. Okay, so um, next update, hopefully uh, a fish in the night. If not, guys, I'll uh, catch up with you with a final wrap up at uh, Calais tomorrow morning. Right, guys. Can't quite believe this, but last, last knockings. It's just gone five o'clock on, uh, on the final morning, Friday morning. I've got to be off by about 6.30. So literally my alarm is due to go off in about 10 minutes time. Middle rods beat me to it. Nice, quick take off the far bank. My objective for the start of the week one surgeon, one cat, one mirror, one grassy. One uncooperative common. Get in there. Full house. Made up with that. It's probably the smallest common in the lake. 18 pound 14 ounces. I do not care about that in the slightest though, so uh, yeah, to be able to uh, pack up shortly, get back to Calais, having achieved one of the things that I wanted to do, absolutely made up with that. I'll show you the other side quickly. Just turn around gently. Keep you nice and... Uh, some wet there, right? Come on, calm down. Here we go. There's the other side. Beautiful common, definitely one for the future for Bill. It's got a nice lower frame on it already. Definitely going to be a big fish. This one, let's get it back and get packed up. Well guys, back at Calais now. Nice easy drive up the A26 this morning. What a session that's been over the last week. I've really enjoyed that. Tough fishing, conditions not ideal, but feel like I've made the most of that. Finished with uh, seven sturgeon, three cats, the 30 pound mirror, 31 pound grassy, and yeah, unbelievably, that's uh, 18 pound common literally half an hour before uh, pack up time this morning so uh, yeah made up to have got that uh, that completes the full house for the week for me uh, so yeah really really happy with that didn't get to see uh, any of the big girls but uh, they'll, they'll do and they'll keep for another time um, if you're thinking of booking lake two what would i say firstly i'll completely recommend it you know it's a 
it's a stunning lake some great stock in there great location service and support from Bill and Ruth is absolutely brilliant if your fingers hovering over that book button I would get your dates reserved get your booking in there and sort of get yourself out to the lake and enjoy some fish in there because it's a great setting to to spend a week I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please um, give the like button a click uh, leave me any comments uh, please subscribe to the channel and I'll get some further content on in the near future thanks for watching catch you all again